A week is a long time in politics. For Hamza Yusuf, it didn't even take that long to cut short a once glittering career. Yusuf, who announced Monday he will resign as leader of Scotland's devolved government, torpedoed his already struggling premiership in the space of five days after he ditched his junior coalition partners without remembering to check they would continue to back him informally in Parliament. His resignation as First Minister Monday leaves the pro-independence SNP facing its second leadership election in the space of two years. Politico runs through the whirlwind five days that ended Yusuf's leadership. Prolog, the SNP confirms on April 18 that it is watering down several Scottish climate targets, angering activists from the party's junior coalition partners, the Scottish Greens. In response, Green co-leaders Patrick Harvey and Lorna Slater promise members a vote on the party's ongoing power-sharing arrangement with the SNP, known as the Butte House Agreement after the first minister's official residence. Despite this, Yusuf insists he will continue to back the continuation of the coalition. Until he doesn't. Wednesday night. A tight-knit selection of senior SNP politicians and advisors are informed Yusuf is now set to ditch the Butte House Agreement with the Scottish Greens, according to two persons familiar with the talks. The Wings Over Scotland blog reports that Yusuf has called an emergency cabinet meeting for Thursday morning. Thursday, 8 a.m., Yusuf meets with Harvey and Slater in his Butte House residence and tells them he is ending the SNP's power-sharing agreement with their party. The co-leaders leave Butte House and walk to the Scottish Parliament, declining the offer of a ministerial car according to a report in the national newspaper. Thursday, 8.30 a.m., Yusuf tells an emergency meeting of his cabinet he is ending the Butte House agreement. According to the first minister's spokesperson, his ministers bang the table in support of the move. A press conference is arranged for 10 a.m. 9.45 a.m. The Greens preempt Yusuf's press conference by holding one of their own. A clearly angry Harvey and Slater tell journalists in Holyrood that Yusuf has capitulated. 10 a.m. Yusuf confirms the Butte House Agreement is being ditched with immediate effect and proclaims a new beginning for the SNP government. He says he hopes to continue working with the Greens on a more informal basis. Noon. Scottish Conservatives leader Douglas Ross announces that his party is lodging a motion of no confidence in Yusuf's leadership due to take place the following week. Thanks to the Scottish Parliament's arithmetic, to win it Yusuf will need the votes of either the SNP's rival pro-independence Alba Party's single MSP, or the Scottish Greens he just sacked from government. 5 p.m. The Greens confirm they will vote against Yusuf in the no-confidence vote. The Alba Party's single MSP Ash Reagan, an SNP defector, suddenly becomes the most important player in Holyrood, and Alba boss and former First Minister Alex Salmond is handed a whole bag of influence. 9.15 p.m. The Times reports that Yusuf is considering his position as First Minister. Friday, 9.07 a.m. In a letter posted on X, the site formerly known as Twitter, Reagan lays out what it would take for her to back Yusuf in the vote of no confidence, including prioritizing independence and the abandonment of pro-trans policies she quit the SNP over. 9.30 a.m. As rumors swirl about his future, Yusuf cancels a speech planned for later in the day at the University of Strathclyde. 9.57 a.m. Scottish Labour leader Anna Sarwar, whose party are neck and neck with the SNP in the polls, announces that he too is tabling a no-confidence motion. Unlike the Tory one, Sarwar's motion, if successful, would legally require Yusuf to resign. 11.16 a.m. The Scottish government announces that, instead of the planned speech at the University of Strathclyde, Yusuf will be visiting Dundee in the afternoon to make an announcement on housing. 1.30 p.m. Yusuf insists he isn't resigning and will fight attempts to oust him. 3.11 p.m. I didn't mean, and I didn't intend, to make the Greens as angry as they clearly are, Yusuf tells the national newspaper, sparking further ridicule. 5.30 p.m. Any SNP hopes that the Greens may change tack and vote with Yusuf are dealt another blow, after Green lawmaker Gillian McKay gives a tearful and angry indictment of the under-pressure leader on the BBC. Saturday, 6.05 p.m. With the Greens not shifting, Alba leader Salman tells the Sunday Times that, if Yusuf wants to continue as FM, he must agree to an electoral pact with Alba. Saturday, 6.41 p.m. Summing up many internal SNP views toward the controversial Salmond, the party's long-serving SNP MP Pete Wishart tweets that 
If we were to even think of entertaining Alba, they would quickly bring us down to their level. Sunday, 10 a.m. With Salman's ultimatum splashing most of the Scottish papers, BBC Scotland reports that Yusuf will not agree to the ex-leader's demands. Sunday, 11 p.m. For the second time in three days, the Times reports that Yusuf may be preparing to quit. Monday, 10 a.m. Amid widespread indications that Yusuf is set to quit, an SNP official confirms that the First Minister will hold a press conference in Butte House at noon. Noon, Yusuf resigns, conceding that he had underestimated the level of hurt and upset that he caused the Scottish Greens, and admitting that a new leader is needed to unite Holyrood and get back to governing Scotland. Politico lists the runners and riders as the divided SNP faces its second leadership contest in two years.